Hello and welcome to this new exciting video. I'm really happy to show you the results that I have gotten for a 30 day period training the AI. So as you already know, Fixie, we're going to be using her as a model in the image to image tab here in Stable Diffusion Web UI. And this side that you're seeing right here has been already trained or exercised to give us better anime screen cap results. This is just impressive. Look at this thing. I can see this happening in a parallel universe where we can see the entire Fixie universe happening in a hat in a 2D hand-drawn animation. <laughs> Look at this. It's great. So this is the the entire video that we're going to present today. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Pierre Schiller. I am a 3D animator and VFX compositor with over 20 years of experience. And I love to work with Blender to create 2D stylized anime characters. And if you're a supporting Patreon, I want to emphasize how much your support means to our channel and to the community because I love to give this kind of premises so that you can get this entire data working for you, either for you know, professional work or as your own personal training. So let's go. You can see right here that I have taken the blue fixie uniform and I have generated my batch. But you can see that this batch is already working perfectly. This is because I have been exercising the cache to generate an anime screen cap from previous um, generations that are not shown right now in the video and I'm going to be explaining this step by step in the entire process right here right now so you can see that all of these variations are really really looking great and as you can see the AI stable diffusion has taken cells at work screen caps as the reference to feed the prompt that I have given it so that it can generate something very appealing now we're going to talk about many different things one of those things first of all is to switch the denoising strength plus changing the image size. Whenever you generate new images from the image to image and you variate the original base image, you need to flush the cache and you do that by changing the image size plus the denoising strength just a little bit and then generate. And as you can see the results here again have been taken from a from an exercise instead of training because you know training has a different connotation here in AI anyway so this has been exercised and now you can see that I'm flushing the cache by resetting it uh, resetting the width and the height or rather changing it just a little bit so that we can get better variations but since it has been exercised it now can take the previous generated data and interpolate it and create our image and we can see that the results again are pretty impressive but the second thing I want you to focus on is that this takes around two to three generation at least for me in, in um, uh, stable diffusion web UI it takes at least three generate buttons <laughs> plus changing the, the image size and the denoise strength only once at least to get this kind of results now, as you can see, my 0.9 denoising strength has given the AI the power to return to my original word prompt, which is a red code. That's why it variates, it deviates from my original source image, which was a blue uniform, and it's taking the full strength on the red uniform. And these are impressive results. Look at this. Now, why am I showing you this? Because we are on the quest to understand what makes the anime look the anime look we are going to replicate that in blender in future in a future video but i'm going to be sharing the kind of files that you're go you're going to need to experiment with in blender 3.5 which has a real-time compositor anyways let's go back here and i'm going to denoise the strength to something to a lower value like 0 0.56 and i'm also going to mark here reconstruct faces you can also do that if you're getting kind of mixed and weird results with your own faces okay so here I'm pressing again generate and it's taking around five minutes to get these results the third thing I want you to focus on on these results are the backgrounds somehow the AI uh, recognizes what is the foreground and then the background and the background looks pretty amazing pretty impressive also please take a look at the colors 
I am using this tiling thing so that you can see the entire screen filled as if we were watching an anime. And this frame here really hit me home <laughs> with the cells at work reference. You know, you can see it right there. Um, nothing really is new in anime design, character design. So maybe you have a character that resembles something like another character that you have previously seen either on manga or in anime, and you can use that reference here. By the way, I did some tests with manga pages, and my goodness, Chef's Kiss, it's great. All right, let's continue here. So as you can see here, the snow, I didn't know how it was going to work, but it looks great. Now I'm going to switch the image. I'm going to be using the same prompt, okay? But now, as we mentioned before, we need to flush the cache, the exercise, exercise cache. So I'm going to switch the width and the height just a little bit and also the denoising strength. And as we have also previously mentioned, you need to press that generate button at least three times to get decent results. Okay? So all of the, my previous images have been generated with a blue uniform. And now you're going to see what it looks like when I press generate and I'm switching the image to a red color for the uniform. Okay? So here are the results. It's focusing on the base image that we have right here from another anime show. And this is looking much better than our previous uh, iterations. So you can see right here that this does look like my character, Fixie. And the cap or the hat has disappeared. Because it's referencing the image that we have already uh, set with the denoising strength. But this will give us a great starting point to create our anime look in the future. So this is looking great. Look at the details here. We are also getting some sort of distortions. This is a better screen cap. But we are also getting distortion, vertical distortions, just like we mentioned before in, an, in another video, that where we have to fix the aspect ratio. That's the fix for vertical distortions. So let's generate it a second time. And now we can see that the results are getting better for some frames so I'm going to be you know jumping here and there so that you can quickly see the results this is not good this is worse this is not good um, even if we see it in tile mode um, this one works I think this one works great look it even included the time th that is usually found in some animes uh, at the top left uh, part of the screen so here we go. Now, why are we creating or what are we acquiring this, this new knowledge? Because we want to apply those things and the way it is composited for us in the Blender real-time compositor. As you probably have known from my previous post, um, I'm working with the real-time compositor from version two, uh, from two or three versions ago. And as you can see, they have added new features. Like for example, now you can apply the entire effect. You cannot apply it to the scene or just to the camera with this convenient drop-down uh, menu that I've shown you in the previous section. So this is our aim. You can create your own anime characters using the anime layering methods to create the anime look here in Blender using the real-time compositor and that's a great advantage over any other software. Now the only thing that we're missing right now are some nodes and obviously the render layers because that is going to allow us to pre-composite all the line artwork separately and then join it back when we have the colors. But anyways let's return here to our experiment and right now we're going to generate this for the third time. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to be switching this to another very radical different image, but it also uses a red color so that you can see how much it, this affects, okay? So the first generate button is going to give us this smudgy, really blurry, really nasty results. This is not workable at all. I mean, this is not appealing at all. This is all failure. And this is because we have not reset the cache. Let's press it a second time. And I'm waiting five minutes for this, but you don't. <laughs> I'm just doing the quick cut here. But it gets kind of a little bit better for the variations. Right now we can recognize human shapes, and that's great. Now let's go for a third time to see what it 
looks like. And we're also going to switch the denoising strength, just like we mentioned before, give it the AI a little bit more control, and then press generate a third time. But because we have previously exercised the engine or the generations, now we can get much more better results. So don't forget, whenever you switch your image, please reset or flush the cache. Look at this result. It is also giving us the appropriate distortion between two subjects and the main subject at the background. Also, please notice the backgrounds. Now let's switch to the text to image and I'm also going to be using the same word prompt. And this is from another day, from another section, and I'm also going to adjust to 1024 to 464 to get the longer wider aspect ratio because ultimately I wanted to test how far I could take a stable diffusion web UI to create something cinematic okay this is why I'm using the long wide shot and the results again are very impressive this is from the text to image um, tab okay stable diffusion is creating this with full creativity control and it's giving me all of these marvelous results even for the uniform please notice how the the camera angles the uniforms even the backgrounds look at this thing it looks great even the backgrounds are really anime feel the anime style that uh, you and I should be looking for whenever we produce something okay so here are my first exercised images and now I'm going to be applying that to create something that resembles Fixie in her original pose and look at this these results are great I'm really impressed with the quality of the backgrounds I am really impressed with the quality of the facial poses and also the uniform it has taken its own personality throughout these different generations that we have right here and one important thing is the panoramic keyword that I'm using right here. The prompt that I'm using, panoramic, also anime screen cap, are making this possible to generate this kind of images. Please look at the backgrounds. The backgrounds are just marvelous. They're beautiful. They, I, I wouldn't even distinguish if that was, you know, an original anime or an AI generated background. And also the character. These are the best iterations I could, you know, directly show you. There are others that are really failure, but this ones are really appealing so that you can see what kind of results you can also get with your own 3D pose character. So this word, this robot, sorry, it's on mid journey. I'm going to give you some tips on mid journey as well. Uh, this has been going viralish on my socials. I don't know why, but you can have it right here. So right now, if you're on mid journey, if you're a mid journey user, you can also use it to generate your own YouTube thumbnails. Okay. You can give it the title, whatever title you search and, you know, make it appealing to read for any reader, but then use those words as the prompt for mid journey to work and generate for you an interesting AI thumbnail for your YouTube um, thumbnail, you know? And I'm using Midjourney version 4. Version 4 allows you to do uh, different things. And you can see that one of those things are this remix prompt right here. And what it does is to take one of the variations that you've created and you can add an extra prompt before generating that variation. That's really interesting because you can add something like, I don't know, uh, thumbnail by Makoto Shinkai style or something like that. And then you can get different variations. And the way you can set this uh, settings, these different settings on Mid Journey with this um, prompt that I have right here. So forward slash settings, press enter. It will give you the mid journey bot options. I'm going to choose MJ version four plus remix mode. There are other things that you should check out with the new version that will allow you to create more things. But right now it's on beta. So you can train, if you can say it that way, you can train mid journey to understand what you want to do or create. Look at these variations. These are just really amazing. So yeah, you're not limited for just creating artworks, environments, characters, or different patterns. You are also able to create 
AI generated thumbnails for your YouTube videos. Okay, that's mostly about it. That wraps it up. And I hope you try these methods with Stable Diffusion Web UI with your own characters. And I hope you have gotten some value out of this video. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you're considering becoming a Patreon, don't forget that Patreons do get access to all of the files I show here as a monthly reward. These are from the, these captures are from the retro anime 90s. And, you know, the important thing here is that you continue to try this on your own characters. Thank you very much. My name is Pierre Schiller. Thank you for your support. And let me ask you something. Have you tried Blender? Try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond artistry compatible.